Man sagt, dass alles um einen herum still wird. Im Moment des Todes. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the Talking Pollock Lava. Today we are going over the MG34, the venerable machine gun from World War II that the Germans employed to great use. And I'm gonna be honest, this thing's pretty freaking cool. Now, to help me out along the way, I employed my assistant gunner. It's just an admin clone from a different universe. Guten Tag. So what happened in your universe? Well, let's see. So ancient aliens made the pyramids. We have Queen Diana, all the same things in your universe. I like this guy. He's a really good time. We're always finishing each other's sentences. We, uh, no, we don't finish each other's sentences. sentences. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming out from your universe to help me run this MG34 and be my AG. It's really big help. Thanks, admin. It's my privilege. I love it. Of course. Now, let's dive on into the MG34. Now, Jim, I know you're on the toilet, I know you're watching this, drinking your coffee, eating your beer, whatever you're doing, maybe time theftning from your boss, make sure you get down in the comment section, leave a comment, say hi to the MG34. Oh, hi, MG34. Tell her that you miss her and you're thinking about her. She'll greatly appreciate it. If you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon, excellent way to support the channel, as well as merchandise, but on the Patreon, we have a Discord, we stay up late, we talk about girls' early access to videos, behind the scenes content, and giveaways of all random knickknacks and cool tactical gear that I get in on the channel. So, all right, so for this next portion, we're gonna do a little, what does the MG34 sound like to be shot at? I figure, hey, we're out here, we'll have Savio rip off some rounds at me, and we'll kind of get an idea of what it sounds like, because uh, why not? It's my YouTube channel, I can do what I want. This is all very safe, there's gonna be a big dirt mound between me and Savio. So it's gonna be physically impossible for me to die. So I'll be fine. They're probably 100 yards away. Still pretty close, but I don't feel like hiking too far. I've actually never been more scared <laughs> to do one of these getting shot at videos than being on the receiving end of an MG34. I can tell you that this is not the best feeling in the world. The worst part is probably the waiting.
Holy shit. I am suppressed. Now, the MG34 has a long and extensive history, and this thing, let's go this way, then this thing is pretty freaking cool, like I was saying in that intro, as well as you saw this thing just ripping and roaring and having a good time. Now, the history behind this thing, now this started development in 1929, and it was accepted in 1934 and started being issued in 30. It got its combat debut in the Spanish Civil War in 1936, killing commies just like our old man. I mean, he's not wrong. The enemy of my enemy is my frenemy. By the time World War II was kicking off, they had about 50,000 of these ready to go. About one in four, about one in five German machine guns at the start of World War II were MG34s. Down the road, they would start to replace a lot of these, and these would become the standard issue. Now, you all know that the MG42 would come out to replace this, but this was still being built in Germany or being built by its uh, proxy nations. I believe this particular model was built in Czechoslovakia in 1944. Now, this was kind of the first concept of the universal machine gun where they wanted to have the option of all around like infantry fighting machine gun, mounting in vehicles, anti-aircraft. On the early models in MG34, there was a wheel, I believe in the pistol grip around here in this area where you could adjust the fire rate going down to 400, up all the way up to 900. This particular model does not have that. When the development was going on this was actually kept pretty hush hush I mean if you think about this for the time period this thing is pretty slick and modern and very chic so I could see the Germans not wanting their adversaries to know about it as well as they had the Versailles Treaty so developing new machine guns probably be like a no-no under that treaty so it was kind of op opsec right bunch of balaclava developing MG34s right now another thing is that multiple companies actually worked on building out this gun and so they actually had to arbitrate going down the line of who gets what for the important parts of the machine gun when it came down to paying out those companies so this was mainly only use this type of machine gun the 34 was only used in tank holes uh, admin clone over here i never served in the military but you served in the military right absolutely in my universe yeah yeah you were what uh, an armor officer weren't you we called uh we called ourselves panzer commanders actually so you were a panzer commander yeah, and, oh, yeah. yeah. so you would have it you would have had extensive training yeah, yeah with actually employing machine guns inside of tanks yeah right? fun thing about the the mg34 is inside the bow of your panzer you're always going to be using a 34 never a 42 throughout the war see the 42 needs the stock to operate and to function right. properly whereas the 34 the stock can be removed and so it's perfect for the bow gunner inside the tank. It's also worth mentioning that that comes from that universal machine gun concept. Another cool thing about why the MG34 is a better tank gun uh, or a coax, whatever you want to call it, is that when you swap out the barrel, everything's more like in line with you as opposed to the 42. You're kind of swinging that barrel out wide. You need more lateral space. So that's a little tidbit for you right there. Now, the MG34 is a well-machined, high-quality machine gun. After looking at it for a bit now, I can see like, okay, this thing was put together very well. It has a bunch of high quality parts. The receiver is, is very fantastic. I believe it's gonna be a nice milled receiver with a bunch of different metal alloys going into it. Now, in a wartime economy, in a wartime nation such as Germany, when they're essentially fighting off hordes and hordes of communists on the Eastern Front, worrying about allied bombing and a lot of logistics, complicated it gets kind of hard to do so that's when the mg42 comes in because you can do a lot more stamping and it's a lot cheaper to make the metal alloys that they needed to make this particular gun are becoming harder and more scarce to find so the mass production you need on the war gaming aspect it kind of goes a little bit of the way of the dodo so that's when the 42 comes to the stage and the 42 really did good for what it was and of course we still see it today in the form of the mg3 now one thing i always think about with the mg34 or at least with these historical guns right is putting yourself in the shoes of those that had to use it. Oh. Now, I'm not talking about the war crime aspect, but I'm just talking about the soldiering and the fighting and trying to have a little empathy in that aspect because it's part of human history. You're, you're pretty much one degree of separation from people that fought in World War II. It's a really cool connection to history in that aspect. So, so a common thing often talked about is how the German squad revolved around the machine gun. Yeah, so the, the German rifle platoon has four squads of 10 guys. There's some other units in that platoon. You got a three-man mortar team. You got a platoon leader. You got some other headquarters soldiers supporting the, the platoon itself. But the, the German rifle squad revolved around the machine gun. The machine gun providing support by fire for the riflemen so they can maneuver under fire support, but also those riflemen were meant to protect the machine gun. I feel like as modern day Americans, 
we're pretty much big corn fed boys, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like I'm six foot, I'm 230. I have access to weight training, great nutrition. If we go back in time to 1940s Germany, the average German, I, what I was doing my research, is about 5'7 to 5'8, and they're probably around 150 pounds. And that weight was probably going down as the war went on. You gotta think, this MG34 is 26.7 pounds. That's like a sixth of your weight, right? That's a lot of weight to carry around. Now, keep in mind, the Germans weren't carrying a lot of kit like soldiers carry today. Yeah, they had their belt line kit, they had some of the gear on their back, but it wasn't to the extravagant level as what we have, of course, today with, say, large rucksacks, plate carriers, large amounts of ammo loads, other explosives you're using. But still, for that time period, that's a lot of weight to carry around. Now, of course, let's go over the technical features of this MG34. All right, my friends, we're gonna work tip to butt like our good old friend Grantham. So we have our recoil booster over here, then we have our front sight. Now this recoil booster kind of reminds me of an AK muzzle device of some capacity. Just a little bit, a little, a little nod to it. Then we have our bipod up here. Now, now this bipod, they made two types of bipods, one with the wheel that would adjust the width of the bipod and one without. This is the one without that adjustment. Then moving down, we have our anti-aircraft sight right here. Essentially, you would take your anti-aircraft sight, twist it on in, and it's spring-loaded and it locks into place. Now, it works in conjunction with the regular sight if you just flip up this aperture back here. And then you have an anti-aircraft setup. Pretty neat little function. You could probably throw that little sight in your gunner's kit if you're the MG gunner, and you can just keep rocking and rolling. Sadly, I have no aircraft to shoot at out here. Oh, dude, it has no idea what it's in for. Got our tab back here that opens up the quick change barrel aspect. Ah, I think I got, there we go. I think it's got to get the weight off the barrel. So then you rock that tab, and then your barrel will start to come out back here. We have our top cover back here. If you flip her up all the way, she may either rest on the front sight if you wanted to rest, but typically if you're going really fast, it'll knock that front sight forward. I noticed I was knocking that front sight or that rear sight forward. We don't have to flip that top cover open. Now, bolt is locked to the rear, gun is safe, and it was rendered safe before we even started filming this little segment. Now, these drums are pretty sick, so I didn't know this, but there's a tab on this drum right here that allows you to stow the starter tab back here. So that's a pretty cool little feature. Now our feed tray right here, and then we have our little guide up here. And it kind of, you can see how it kind of works with guiding the rounds in with the recoil. So you have this little rail on here, and it works in conjunction with this back bolt, as you can see. So pretty cool aspect there. Let's talk right here, pistol grip, charging handle on this side. We're just doing a quick overview. If you want to get more in depth, of course, always go watch Forgotten Weapons. And now a really cool thing about this, there he is, is going to be the sling. Now this is a genuine World War II sling. There is even the eagle marked on the sling itself. So very cool right there. Sights are marked up to 2,000 meters, which with this and 8 millimeter Mauser, I could be like, you know what? I could see that being plausible. I could see that happening. Yes, perhaps. I could see that as a very real possibility. And then moving down to the safety trigger setup. So the safety is really cool. So it's a nice little throw safety, it seems like. So then you can see your S, you can see your F, and then the only German machine gun that has two triggers, one being for semi and then one being for rapid fire. Talking about this gun is fun, talking about it is cheap, so I say we run a little drill. All right, so what's gonna happen right now is essentially we're gonna try and go as fast and safe as we can. Running this drill, what we're doing is we're providing cover fire for our German assaulting element. They're gonna assault to the objective, so we're gonna provide cover fire, and then we'll run up and get set up to assault the next objective. We're gonna try and do this as fast as we can. All right, it should be some fun. You ready, Hans? Let's do it. Target. All right, Hans, we're moving. Schnell, schnell. Ich bin erlangen. You're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Rest of there. 
Run the gun. Stand by. Set. Come on, you dirty fall line. Let's do it. Oh. You fuck. Ah. All right, well, we had some technical difficulty. Now, this MG34 is a fully transferable MG. Now, of course, I don't own this cool MG34. It is on loan to me from a friend of the channel. Nick, get over here. Nick, when people bring on cool guns to the channel, I usually ask if they want to say anything to my audience. What would you like to tell my audience? That is a really, really excellent gun. It's fun to shoot, and it's just a blast being out here with the host. You heard the man. It's a blast being out here with Nick, too. Thanks, Nick. You're welcome. Now, you're probably wondering, you saw part of that intro when I was in a wooded area. That was in Colorado, and I was actually hanging out with Apex Gun Parts. Now, besides them being a big sponsor of the channel, I was hanging out with them, and they actually brought out the MG34. Now, the sad part is, is that MG34 was having some issues, and was a little sick, so I had to go to the hospital. This one's been working pretty good, and we're kind of doing the redemption run of an MG34 episode. Now, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So the cool thing about that gun not working when I was up with Apex and Colorado is I had a lot of great time working the manual of arms on that MG. I'd have an issue with the malfunction, I'd have to clear it, rack it, top cover, go through the process, rack it down, get the next bolts in there, and it was actually a pretty good time. So I can say, despite the, the issue of not getting the working machine gun for the episode, I got really good working the malfunctions on the MG34. So The kind of the fun call outs for the MG34 as we're handling it, getting more familiar with it is just how similar it feels to our modern machine guns. For any of you who've, who've humped around a 249 or a 240 Bravo, it functions the same way. It'd take you about two minutes to figure out how to use this. You know, brass to the grass, fires from the open bolt position. Now this is going to be the gunner's kit. It's cool to see this uh, alongside the MG34. This is typically worn by the machine gunner himself and it had a bunch of spare parts and accessories that the machine gunner would need to keep his platform up and going. A little mobile tool kit, kind of a bunch of spare parts, a couple wrenches. Uh, they had the spider sight they probably put in there, and then you have your lube, oil, dry lube, some wrenches. This is a broken shell extractor, and then here we got the spare bolt as well. Now, cool little tidbit is you would see some pictures of this strap. They'd take that asbestos pad for swapping out the barrel. There's probably stuff from right here, so it'd have them ready and access to go. So, cool little piece of history, a little part of the kit that goes along with the webbing. <laughs> Well, Jim, I think this concludes the video on the MG34, a historic firearm with an excellent legacy of service. It was still being used in multiple conflicts even after World War II, technically even before World War II, and it just showed how good the Germans are at designing weapons. This thing is pretty freaking cool. Now, of course, Jim, if you enjoyed this episode, feel free to like and subscribe, ring that notification bell, as well as leave that freaking comment. I do love reading those comments. They are either a drag to humanity or the highlight of my day. Either way, it's a great time because there is an algorithm God and the algorithm God enjoys your engagement. If you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon, excellent way to support the channel as well as merchandise. So go ahead and check out that web store. I greatly appreciate it. Everything is going to be the links in the description down below. As always, gentlemen, stay easy, stay breezy. I'll catch you on the flip. Oh man, I knew! Hot potato. Yeah. Looking good, Hans, looking good. Pop up. All right, I am in defilade. Okay. I think I'm in defilade. Um, I mean, it definitely felt really cool. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, I'd say send them slightly over me and then, uh,